So these are self-massage te techniques from Qigong. Um, Qigong is kind of like Tai Chi. If uh, Tai Chi was a car, Qigong is the engine of the car. So it'll, uh, if someone's got a tight muscle, they're fatigued, um, sore muscles, pain, usually people want to massage the area. It's a very natural thing. And for most conditions, that's a really good thing to do. It's a very, very old way of looking after ourselves and after, after each other. So these are techniques that are very, very old, these techniques, and they work quite well. So these are very good if you have sore, tight muscles, um, you're really tired after a long day, doing lots of exercise, doing lots of walking, manual labor, that sort of stuff. Great for, really good for someone who's an office worker. Uh, fibromyalgia issues, sleep issues, headaches, migraines. This is all really useful for that kind of stuff. Or just random pains that show up in your body. So we'll do this step by step. So first one, hands together and we're massaging fairly vigorously. So we're making a lot of sensation go to the skin. Then along the sides, so the sides of your hand here, massaging those. The inner edge, like karate chop part of your hand, inner edge, massage there, or rub it, which is stimulating. So we're sensitizing the hands, getting more blood flow, more energy flow going on the hands. Fingertips, fingertips just touching, this shouldn't be painful. There, and then we're touching these areas like a seal. So we're just banging those areas together. Then we're banging the karate chop area together. Then the wrists here together. Just not too hard. We don't want to cause any nerve sensations, but if you do, it's not a bad thing. The top of the hand. Okay. Then we start massaging the head like you're shampooing your hair. Simple as that. So right on the center line, opening up the center line. All over your head, there's acupuncture points everywhere in your head. This can make you feel really energized straight away. If you have a tension headache, this helps straight away. Headaches that go behind your eye or just above your eye, useful for there. Make sure you go up and down above your ears. Give this a good go. Uh, so you can't really do it wrong, just doing it is the most important thing. But a way to make it a bit more effective is that I'm, so I've got pressure here, this movement coming here is actually the skin, the skin sliding over the skull there. So I'm not, not rubbing on the skin like this, not sliding on the skin. I'm touch contacting the skin then moving the tissue underneath. So I'm doing that. There's a little bit of sliding too, some areas just really tight. But ultimately I'm just moving the skin on the scalp to affect the tissue underneath. That's a really good way to do this. Then the back of your head. So if you find, if you go down the back of your head, you'll find a, a divot that sticks out, a bony protuberance. And then if you go, keep going down, you go into a bit of a gully, a hole. So the oxy, below the occiput. Then you come out about two fingers width and you're into gallbladder 20. It's a really good point for neck tension, all sorts of issues through the, the neck and the head, fatigue. And I'll show you from behind. So spend a bit of time massaging there, just circles. And I'm going a little bit wider now, more into the soft tissue. So I'm following along the base of my skull here. And really important thing, you can't get this wrong. Just massage it, give it attention. Good. Rub your hands, give your shoulders a bit of a rest. Then you're massaging your face. So here you are rubbing over the skin. Both ways, so you're making the eyebrows go the wrong way. And I'm massaging around the, the, the muscles of your jaw, very tight for a lot of people. So as I do this, I'm getting into those muscles there too.
and just straighten your eyebrows up. Give the third eye a bit of a massage here. So I'm just circling between the eyebrows and a little bit above. It can be very soothing to do this one, especially if you're just laying in bed and you just do this point itself. Uh, a lot of people see colors when this is done, so it's activating different parts of the brain, that's all. And then the other way, so you see colors on their eyelids. Very calming, very soothing. Then we're going around to the temples. Yeah, very delicate bone here, so you're not pushing too hard. Then running your hands around your eye sockets. So around the rim of the eyes, there's acupuncture points all through here. And then going down, so using your knuckles, knuckles here, inside edge. So you're going down along the edge of the cheek here, underneath there, so I can clear your sinuses, this one. Good. Then using your key grip, like you're gripping a key to get into your door, going down the ear. So many acupuncture points and uh, reflex points in your ear, representing the whole body. And, uh, and a lot of these points, uh, some in scientific journals too, especially help with shortness of breath in people with COPD. So you're just massaging along the ear. And doing it with a happy smile, not necessarily a smile, but a happy feeling. So you're just you're exploring your body. This helps you heaps. And then brushing down your neck here like you're brushing water, or well, for me, I'm like I'm brushing my beard. And then the nape of your neck. So where your, your shoulder meets your neck, so it's the trap is where you, know, if you say you're really tight traps and you go, oh, can you massage me here? It's pretty much that point just along here. So you can't get it really wrong can be along this area you can do too, you're hitting the muscle, but the point is actually there. It'll affect the first rib. And you're using, I tend to use this part of my hand here. You can use this part too. And I'm swinging this way, so I'm hitting in. I'll just use that part of my hand. Hitting in. And it shouldn't hurt you, so you're not hitting so hard it hurts. And all I'm doing is shift my weight across, letting my arm swing. Just like little kids when they walk, sometimes they swing their arms around like this. That kind of swinging idea. So this movement itself, if you have very tight shoulders, any shoulder issues, uh, sore neck too, can't turn your neck enough. Do this one, you'll find an instant difference. But uh, maybe don't do it out in public. So I'm noticing my breathing feeling easier already just doing this. Just relaxing all the upper muscles when we're really tense, uh, stressed, breathing goes into the upper chest. So relaxing these muscles helps the breathing go back into the abdomen. Striking these points again. So it can be a bit tender. That's, that's fine. It's not going to damage you. It just stimulates the points really well. So we're working with um, large intestine 4. If you want to look up these points, large intestine 4. It's uh, one of the four gates they call. A lot of illnesses can be helped with just this point alone in acupuncture. Then we're going to, so it's a bit hard to, it's a bit hard to see here. So I'm not going in my armpit, but more on my arm still there. So just where my arm is coming in to meet my armpit, hand on there, and it's, it's right on the, the coracobrachialis muscle, if you want to look that up. So I'm circling, I'm just pulling across like that and letting the arm circle as I do this. 
and it frees up a lot of tension in the arm and fix the heart meridian as well. Good. Then we go to, if you fold your arm, the where that crease ends, so it's large intestine 11, so we're whacking that, that can be a bit tender. So this hitting is all called, it's called pedagong, which means um, hitting to stimulate, like stimulating the channels, the fascia, the muscle, nervous system. And this whole series makes you feel very energized afterwards. Uh, it can be done once, twice, three times a day. Uh, once is usually enough. If you're really fatigued, a lot of pain, do it twice a day. If you practice Tai Chi, do it before and after. Practice meditation, do it before meditation. Do this series before meditation, then meditate, you'll see how much more energy you have. Then we're going down the top of the forearm. Onto the wrist, back of the hand. Then we're going around this area here. This is a point that people stimulate when they have um, car sickness or nausea. Should add this point, don't strike, and this point here. Don't strike if you're pregnant, uh, quite important. I'm just going along the forearm. Then we go to the side. So I'm finding that point again just before my armpit hits on that muscle. And um, can be a bit nervy if you're hitting nerve. Uh, maybe come a little bit more forward, forward in the arm with it. Uh, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be bad in terms of damage anything, but you just you're just on the brachial nerve. Uh, so quite a nervy spot for people. So just come off that, you're coming a little bit more forward on the muscle. The brachial nerve comes through here. So if you're on it, you're probably too far back here. Come more forward. Let it circle. It's really good for martial arts people. Helps you get power out when you're punching. If you release the tension in your shoulders, your power comes out more, as long as you connect to your hips and your waist. Good for gym goers, they get very tight in the shoulders. So it just loosens things up. Then we go to large intestine 11 again, find that crease. Once you know where the points are, you don't have to measure them anymore. It doesn't have to be too specific either. In acupuncture, they've got real specific points they needle because the needle's so small and fine. We gotta make sure they hit the right spot and not hit nerves and things like that. But with what we're doing, just anywhere around the area, anywhere around here, and my skin's getting red there, that's good. This is really good to do if you've got tennis elbow. If you're doing a lot of gripping, you do plus BJJ, lots of gripping, really good to do. Uh, lots of work with your hands, manual labors. If you're an archer, like archery, who really gets this muscle working. Go down the forearm. Hitting here, so this area here. Then up the forearm, down again. And then just tapping your sternum. And we're tapping with fingertips on the sternum. I don't know how much is gonna affect my mic. So we're going up and down the sternum, along the center of it, along the sides of it. It's a bit tender usually, it's like Tarzan. You can even do this sort of stuff too. So we're stimulating the, uh, a lot of energy channels uh, between the nipples here, or in the center, uh, Tanjung. Uh, good for asthma, top conditions, tightness in the chest, things like that. Uh, and then up high, we're stimulating the thymus. Thymus is uh, really important for uh, a lot of immune cell formation, that sort of stuff. So we're going there, and then we're slapping the sides. So stimulating the spleen channel and the gallbladder channel. Then we're hitting just with the loose hand, loose fist, hitting around the abdomen. 
going the way digestion goes, which is, uh, if you're looking at me, digestion goes that way. So it shouldn't hurt. If it hurts, you're hitting a bit too hard or you have a real serious stomach issue or diverticulitis or something like that. So you just go easy. And then we go around the belt meridian. So I'll do a series on adding uh, this energy skill, but it's like your, your hands are magnets and the energy or the blood in your body is like iron filing. So as in your mind, your mind is the magnet too. So mind and hands are the magnet and you're following with your mind where your hands are. And it's like you're drawing the blood and the energy around the waist like iron filing is being drawn by the pull of a magnet. So as simple as that, that's all. So we go around the belt meridian, this controls yin-yang energy flow, so energy up and down the body, and we go the other way. Then we're either using this part of the knuckles here, or this part here, and we're just whacking into the TFL muscle, so the very sides of the hip. So it can be really tender, can feel really good too, because it's very tight in most people, this muscle. And going into the glutes, so you can use your, your thumb, you can use your hands, um, sides of your hand, the, this part again, so there, uh, there, or here. Or knuckles, I'm using the knuckles right now. So it's whacking into the top part of the glute, so the glute medius muscle. Can feel really good, can be very tender in people. Then I'm whacking into the very center of my buttock. So stimulating the bladder channel. And I'm going down the sides of the legs. I'm using more here now as I do that. Down the sides of the legs to the knee. And I'm just hanging out on the side of the leg in the middle between knee and hip. Really important acupuncture point can help a lot of ITB issues. And I'm using the knuckles now. Going in just above the knee on the side, so into the, the vastus lateralis muscle out of quad. And I'm going along the sides of the knee, going down below the fibula head. So the fibula head is this knobbly bone that sticks out here. If you hit around here, you can feel a bit nervy. It's not bad, but stay off it. We're hitting about three fingers width below the, the knob of the fibula head. So the rise here, three fingers width just here. So it's a tendon control point. Nearly every fascial line in the body winds through this point here. So if you have tendon issues in any part of your body or tension issues, whack this one. Then we go down the sides, uh, actually, just hang around the front a little bit. Same level, go around the front, so into the tibialis posterior, tibialis anterior muscle. Here, so my shin's here, I'm not hitting the shin. I'm hitting in the muscular bit, just here. And I'm going down the sides. And I'm whacking the feet, coming up the insides. Down the sides. Go into the buttocks, buttocks again, down the hamstrings, back of the knees, back of the calves. Use this part, give the whack in the center of the back of the calf. You can still do this with shoes, still just as good. Down the sides. Then go down the back again. The front and the side up the inside down the back up the front again give your hands a rub well done for doing all that really stimulates the blood to flow really well a bit of a workout too make your hands warm 
hands on the lower back, so affecting the kidneys. So you just have the intention and that feeling of that warmth soaking into your back, soaking into your kidneys. The kidneys are in the upper part of your lower back, but even if your hands can just get to your lower back, it's fine, still do the job. Then we start to circle, and I make sure my fingers can massage my lower back too. So we circle the energy in the kidneys here. We'll just make circular motions, probably a better way to say it. And uh, what this can do, it can make your feet warm. Rubbing the kidneys, some people get warm feet, is a very good sign if it does. And then from here, raising up on the balls of the feet, and then drop. So we're dropping your body weight into the ground. So the, the knees and the hips bend to take the, the shock out of the body. So I'm not doing this where I jolt my body. I'm dropping and letting my pelvis fall. Hands go back, forward. So there's a sense of the any tension in your body, energy, any energy that's risen, like blood, we have a sense of that dropping down into the ground. And this stimulates the kidney one point. And from here, your knees, like you're shaking in your boots. So your knees just quickly back and forward, then uh, uh, sideways, then back and forward here. And shaking in your boots again. So your knees a little bit off, just a little bit off lock. Back and forward, let the hips start to turn this way. And we're shaking. and the arms come up the awareness go down through your body to your feet coming up a 45 degree angle arms just off lock awareness like you're pouring water into the top of your head stretching all through your body all the way down to your feet so anything that feels unsettled inside it's like it's been pulled downwards into the ground. And we just do one more. Good. And, um, so you're, if you're male, your left hand is on your body. If you're female, right hand on the body. Just over your belly button. And you just start to circle. Just small circles. Place your tongue on the roof of the mouth. Um, where your tongue touches the roof of the mouth when you say le, like in French, L-E, like in French. Le, le, where the tongue touches. So you're connecting two major acupuncture channels through your body, so through the torso. As you do this, you're just allowing your body to relax. Like the, uh, all the energy from the practice is being absorbed from your skin into the abdomen, into the bones, into the organs, into the abdomen. So you can have your legs straight or you can bend them a little bit, unlock your knees. Breathing in and out through your nose. Then we go the other way. And we're just moving whichever direction feels better for you. One day it feels good one way, other day it feels good to start the other way. In Qigong there's some pretty hard and fast rules about this. But just play with it. Some ways feel better than others and on different days feels better. And some Qigong systems even have the other way around, so male is the right hand on the bottom. So play with that too, see what feels better for you. 
you're not going to um, create a, a rip in the space-time continuum if you get it wrong. So as I do this right now, I feel my feet starting to warm up. It's a really good sign. And then I'm just stopping there. So my hands over the belly button. Just resting, letting the body become still. I wish you well on your journey towards better health and be able to really empower yourself for improving the health of your body. Uh, there's a lot you can do with your own hands to improve your own body. All the best.